Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bassin TV, and we are live in the Bonafide booth here at ICAST 2017, and I'm going to try something a little bit different. Instead of shooting this video and doing this fancy walkthrough, we're going to do this live, and maybe we can even have a few questions pop up, and we can ask you guys, or we can answer them as we go. So, I'm going to turn it over to Luther Cyphers and Hans Newts of Bonafide, and they're gonna walk you through the boat. We're gonna do a little bit different walkthrough than you've seen anywhere else because we got one boat on the floor that the guys can jump in and out of and we can turn it on its side and get a look at the hull. So I'm gonna turn it over to Luther and Hans and we're gonna do a full walkthrough. Bow to stern, top to bottom, upside down and sideways of the Bonafide SS 127. Here we go. Luther, get in there, baby. Let's start on the boat. Let's start on the boat up top. So you want to go bow to stern, we'll start in the bow. The first thing is everything on this entire kayak, with the exception of the Yakutat gear tracks, has been designed from the ground up. Very purpose driven design. Starting with the handles, something as simple as a handle, we put quite a bit of time and effort into. Wanted to get the, the oversized grip so it gets the PSI on your hand down, makes it a lot more comfortable. It's even got a rubber insert on the bottom, so it's non-slip. It's going to be a lot more comfortable than just a plastic rib handle. Uh, right behind that, you've got the boss strap. So you've got bosses on top that are going to keep your rod tips and stuff organized. you got bosses on the bottom that are going to give a paddle blade a little bit of grip when you slide it underneath there. Nice, quiet landing pad here for it. This just keeps your rod tips from rolling off the deck of the boat if you set them down. Y'all just roll, man. We're doing this live. Go for it. Yeah, Jump absolutely. in there. Show them that hatch functionality. So with rod tip management, we also we've also just made the hatch uh, really line up with the rod tip management. So we the hatch the deck of the hatch is, is set up so that when you park your paddle up on the bow, the paddle shaft actually lands on the on the hatch, and it uh, it's, it makes it for a quick and easy way to kind of set it down. But the cool thing about the hatch um, is that we have these these double header hinges, so. If you're going to store your rods for transport, and this is a boat that's 12 foot 7, you can open the hatch from outside the boat and you've got rod storage inside. Actually right now I think we actually have a power pole stored down in there. So um, you, you can store six rods in the, uh, in the outside gunnels. And then the cool thing about these hinges is that we've also put them at the other side of the uh, of the hatch. So now when you're inside the boat, open the hatch that way and you can actually access the boat from, uh, from inside. The other thing that makes that really cool is you want to do a deep cleaning on the boat, you just pop them both, take it out, you can get up in there and wrench the boat yeah, out, flip it over, do, it, do whatever you want to do, drain, all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so moving back, you want to talk about the pod a little bit? Yeah, so we've got the dry pod. We don't, we're not really so much called an electronics pod, although you can mount electronics to it. It's dry storage. It's true gasketed dry storage. We've got these nice oversized hinges on the side. They're going to give you a good seal. And then it lifts up. If you need to access a transducer on the bottom, something like that, you can do that. The other thing is you've got a, you've got a nice big open scupper area here. So, you know, when you're out on the water, you've been out there all day, you had one too many waters or maybe a cold beer. Nature calls, there you go, you got that taken care of too. It's easily removable, you can pop the hinge, it's got the same double header hinge system, so you can pop it, remove the pod really easily. Um, you, can e you can even get extra pods and have these things set up for tackle management. So you can pop out a pod, pop in another one, makes rigging up for a trip a lot quicker, a lot easier. The other, the other big feature on this boat is that we built a hole around the stability of being able to stand. So cleared the deck out so that you've got a lot of room to stand. Um, and with that, we've got uh, we've got a high seat that's going to get you up really high in the seat. And uh, and we've also got uh, you can talk about foot braces. We'll do that. Let's talk yeah. about foot braces. Let's talk about <laughs> so one of the things we've heard a lot of feedback on over the years is people don't like flimsy foot braces. So. We, what we've taken here is Yak Attack GT-175 gear tracks, uh, and we've adapted those four foot braces. These are prototypes in, in production. We'll actually have uh, scales marked on here so you can know where you've got the foot brace, put it in position, tighten it up. You're gonna get infinite adjustment. 
tighten it up, but you're also going to get a nice rigid foot brace that you can brace against. Also really easy, if you want, to remove them all together. Let's talk about this tackle tray. Yeah, so, you know, the first place that all of your, you know, when you're changing lures, you're moving fast back and forth between rods. First place that everything lands is right under your seat. Everybody knows that you want to store Plano boxes under your seat. So we wanted to make sure we had a chair that had the height that you that you could have to fish out of, and that allowed us to get a uh, something under the under the seat that we call the junk drawer. So there you have it. All your storage under the seat. Soft plastics, Plano boxes. Lots of room under your seat for storage. That's quick quick access. We've also got that on. Uh, on deck traction so you're able to keep it quiet you can slide it in and out and uh, and then we've also added rod stagers onto that junk drawer so those rod, the your rod butts will land on the stagers and they actually will go uh, land up on the hood they're, they're set to, uh, to sort of line up with the hood so your rods will, uh, will connect up there all right now let's talk about the seat yeah the seat. what everybody's been asking about on all the social media is go show us that bonafide seat so we did the full walkthrough yesterday with luther but we did it on the story and not a lot of people know how to get to the story so now we've got to do it where you guys can see it live on youtube we're gonna get hans to demonstrate it this time all right get in there buddy we want to do it over here just do it just like that yeah, okay absolutely seek this is a seat that has a high position and a low position. Um, the, the low position is, you know, you guys talked about this before. It's pretty high. Pretty, yeah. The low position is already at a height. It's comfortable for fishing. It's comfortable for paddling. In windier conditions, it's, a, it's the right, we felt like it was the right height for that. And then we have this higher position, which is closer to that cooler height. It's up over 10 inches height of height off of the deck of the boat. Almost dinner table height. Almost, yeah, that's right. So. So, um, you know, with that, now you're, you know, if you have low, a little bit of lower back trouble, lower back pain, now your legs are, you know, you have a more natural bend in, at your knees. So all that stuff helps for a better day on the water, better, you know, longer day on the water. Easier to stand. You're Easier almost already there. Yeah, exactly. Easier to sit is the big thing. Yep. A lot of people have no problem standing, but they have a lot of problems sitting because yeah. you almost got to fall back. And it's like a, you That's know, the right. nesty plunge or that. You know that that uh, trust fall that you did in church camp yeah, or whatever. You had to fall back. It's kind of like that. Where this one, you just sit down. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Hans, show so, them how it works. So high. This is high to low. You're gonna pull the seat cord up front. Back drops. And you're gonna undo the latches. And then you can choose where you want it to go. And bungee stuck in there. Oh, doing it live. Doing it live. <laughs> there you go. That's so, my fault. I took that off. Yeah. That's it. High to low. So, All right, now take it back. It simple. From low to high. Low to high. Yeah. Grab it. Flip it up. Push it back. That's it. It's that simple. All right, so... That's it, guys. It's not that complicated, but you really have to see this to believe how easy it is. And it's actually, you know, you almost fumble through it a little bit when you're doing it from the side. But when you do it in the boat, it's super easy. So yeah, and you can do it super quietly. You know, if you yep. take your time, there's you can do you can really go from high to low or low to high. No reason to make a lot of noise. You know, the boat's a big giant speaker on the water. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're going to transmit a lot of noise anytime you're bumping around. With this thing, you're going to be able to do it really quiet. All right, so let's take a look at the back, and then what we're going to do is come over here to this boat. So when I said it's a full walkthrough, it's a full walkthrough. We're going to come over to this boat, let Luther demonstrate what he just said is easier in the seat for you. Then we're going to flip it over. We're going to show you the hole. Because everybody's asking about the hole, and everybody's talking about the hole. But we haven't showed you the hole. So now we're going to show you the hole. Here we go. Let's go over here and take a look at the tank well. All right. So the tank well is designed for kind of an oversized tank well. You can get a black pack back here. You, can, you still have room for a small cooler or a soft cooler as well, either in front or behind the black pack. It's made 
Specifically, so the black pack can fit in either sideways or long ways. Different people like to rig that. All right, so check this ways. out. I have legitimately had about a dozen people message me and say, I don't know why they haven't seen pictures of it, but you can't fit that black pack in there sideways. Yeah. So can you just demonstrate sure. that real quick? Because yeah, I want you to that, talk about this while you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, while I'm doing that, I'll dem demonstrate the Omni hooks. These are just little simple bungee hooks. They go right in line with the bungee. You can slide them wherever you want and position those. They're made to fit into the clips on a black pack. You can also use them to hold down a cooler or a, or a crate or a Anything with a molly system, to. a bucket. Yep, yeah. exactly. And just like that, like real time, nothing edited, nothing fancy, but what's cool about this is it leaves you room back here for a cooler. It leaves you room back here for more gear and it leaves you room to have access. And so we're gonna spin around and show you guys this access plate and then look at the stern of the boat. One thing we decided early on was that this is not a real practical place for a hatch. Uh, you can't really get back here, it's a small space, but you do need to get be able to get inside the stern area if you wanted to rig up a trolling motor or a rudder or a torpedo or a power pole, whatever it is. So we just put an access plate, it's a sealed access plate, it's gasketed. You've got four screws when you're doing some rigging on the boat, maybe for an anchor trolley pulley, whatever. You just take those four screws out, you've got access, sail them right back up. And probably one of my favorite features on this boat is the oversized fat grip stern handle. So one of the things we knew right away is that we wanted the handle on the front and the back to be the closest thing to the person carrying the boat because that's what's the most comfortable. The problem with that is, particularly in the stern, that's also where you want to put a rudder or, you know, power pole, whatever. So if you have a handle that's just sticking out, that's going to get in the way of those things. So we just made this handle retractable. It's an oversized handle. If you want to carry this boat loaded down with gear, you can actually get two hands on it. Two hands. Which will really reduce the, the, the force in your palms, make it a lot more stable, a lot easier to carry. And then when you're done carrying it, you let go, it goes, tucks itself back away. So, you know, you got this thing completely ready to fish. All right, let's take a look at the boat on the floor. Get you to demonstrate the seat change position from the boat. And then we'll flip it over and take a look at the hull. Yeah, while we're at it, I mean, another thing that's always a good issue on a, on a boat is parking pole management. Can, hey Luther, turn towards the camera and talk so they can the same paddle the same paddle clip or, or paddle park area on that's on both sides of the boat you can use it for your paddle you can also, also use it for your parking pole parking pole management is always kind of an issue so you definitely have that option all right so what we're going to do guys is we're going to get luther in the seat and do a demonstration from the side so you can see the mechanisms working and then i'm going to have him go back to the high position i'm going to come around the front and demonstrate it from the front so you kind of see how the whole thing works sure so, I'm in a high position here. I want to go to low. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to shift my weight forward. <laughs> Just gently lift up the back of the seat or hold the string. You're going to notice I'm going to be able to let this down without making any noise. It'll take a little bit longer to do it quietly, but you can definitely do that when you want to. I'm going to release the seat rack, lift the seat up, fold the front legs under there, choose my trim position. I've got three trim positions here. I'm going to trim this thing in the center. So I just went from high to low without making any noise. Same thing going from low to high. Okay, so stay there. I'm going to come around the okay. front. I want these folks to see this from another angle. So here we go, going from low to high, yep. because that's the one that everybody's going, oh, you might be able to go from high to low, but you can't go from low to high, not on the water, not the way I've been seeing it work. So okay. let's just see it. It's this easy. We're going to undo the seat racks. Again, we're going to shift our weight forward in the boat. We're going to pull the seat forward. As I pull it forward, that's going to unfold the back legs. It's right here, natural place to reach down, unfold those front legs, slide it back, drop it to the seat rack. Now I'm in the high position. Now, I want you to stand up and sit down from the front, and then I'm going to do it from the side. And that way people can just see the sit and stand from that seat right on the floor. Can you make that look a little bit harder? No, sit back yeah, down. Let me try that again here. No, Simon says. <laughs> <laughs> All right. you're, you're already almost standing up. I mean, this is not much different than standing up from the dinner table. Yep. 
And so because everybody says, well, like, you know, Luther's like really knows this boat really well. He can probably do it real easy. Let me jump my fat butt in there and show everybody how easy it is. So again, I have a lot of bigger dudes that say, yeah, I mean, that might work for you. That might work for him. I seen that little dude on there. But this seat, you're already up here. So even if you don't have the faith to just freestand like Luther did, just put your hand on the side of the seat and literally just push up and you're standing up. It's that simple. And to sit back down, it's the same thing. Just sit back down. You just stand up and you just sit down. It's that easy. There's no straps required. There's no gimmicks required. You just stand up. Now, let me get out of this thing and let's flip it up on its side and show these guys the hole. I'll tell you what, while we're here, right before we do that, the other thing we've had people asking about is the perch position. A lot of people ah, feel like that's the uncomfortable. Perch position. They feel like you got to do some acrobatics to get up there. So, just going to demonstrate that quickly. So, when you want to do, you basically treat the boat like a pulling platform or you want to do some stand up fishing. All you have to do, you're gonna let your seat back. There's a number of ways to do this. This is the easiest way I found. You gotta let your seat back, get that out of your way. You're just gonna take your foot here and put it on the standing pad. So now you're in kind of a, a crouched position. And again, you just stand up. It's, it's that easy. Take the seat back, flip it in front of you. And now this right here on the back of the seat becomes a perfect place. You've got your boss strap in the front, lay your rod tips across there. You can stage rods on the back of the seat. You can stage your paddle on the back of your seat. I had a couple of comments on uh, Facebook that this is a wider stance is going to mean a lot more magnified movement on the water and all this stuff, that it only gets you up two or three inches. The reality is you're up at least six inches from the deck. And because you're a wider stance, it's a lot more stable. The boat, at, th at this position, the boat feels like a boot. I mean, you can you can lean steer you can do whatever you want and if you can flip the boat from this position it's because you've got some really really good agility it's not easy you're gonna fall off this boat before you flip it it's just incredible the stability that you get up here all right last question about the seat usage is yeah but uh i bet you can't sit side straddling that thing that's another one that i've heard so yeah. answer uh, that the, question for us yeah no, again that's pretty easy what you would do is just let the seat back to get the looseness in the strap. And it's really comfortable, even from the high position, and even for bigger That's guys, it. super the comfortable. Stability, the stability, even there. Yeah. All right, so before we flip the boat up on this side, since we've got this quorum right here, I want you to step back into this group right here, and let me introduce the world to uh, Team Bonafide. So if you want to know why a company can do what Bonafide did in such a short period of time, it's because of the people, right? So I'll get in a little tighter. Yeah, so we're going to start from right here. And uh, a lot of these dudes don't need any, any uh, introduction if you are a kayak fisherman. But I'm going to start with Luther, let him introduce himself, tell you who he is. And give us the Cliff's Notes version, the, 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 the 10 second Luther, who you are, where you're from, what you've been about in the industry, and why it is that you wanted to make a fishing kayak. Sure, so I'm Luther Cypers. I'm the president, CEO of Bonafide Kayaks. <clears throat> I've been in the industry for about nine years, mostly making accessories. Um, out of the box thinker, we want to do things differently. We like breaking rules um, and having a bunch of fun doing this. We wanted to build a kayak because there, there are a lot of great kayaks out there. But we knew there were some things that we could do, some things that we could accomplish that would add to the sport, make it a better better sport to be in, and help people have a better time fishing on the water. Go. Hey, I'm Jake Fuller. I'm the product manager at Bonafide Kayaks. I've uh, been in the industry about my entire life since I was 19. Um, just uh, basically my job is here to listen to the consumer and make sure we're designing and you know engineering the right stuff for you guys. and get you what you need to get out on the water and have a good experience. My name is Matthew Monroley. I am the engineering manager for Bonafide Kayaks. Uh, I've been in the industry for now just over three years. Um, I wanted to, I enjoy this, uh, this team and working with Luther and everybody. It's, it's once in a lifetime that you get a team like this that pushes you and push, makes you innovate and just keeps pushing the edge and pushing the off. So I wanted to be a part of that with this team. Hey, hey everybody, I'm Hans Newts. I'm uh, the design manager. 
not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is a little, a little gone, but I'm the design manager at Bonafide Kayaks, and, uh, you know, it's it's great working, joining forces with everybody here. Um, been in the industry for uh, almost six years now, and just, uh, just want to see it continue to grow and continue to design <laughs> great stuff, and, and uh, hang out with these guys, and hang out with that guy, and, and uh, do, so, what, do what we do, you know, so. There it is, guys. It's it. Team Bonafide. <laughs> These guys got a smoking deal on a bunch of medium t-shirts. <laughs> That's the only way you could make it on Team Bonafide. Jake had to lose like 25 pounds to get on the He's team because he only story. had medium t-shirts. True story. But anyway, guys, that's the reason that you can make world-class kayaks is when you put a world-class team together and a group of guys that work well together, that don't stop working, that, that have a focus towards getting the mission done, not the job, because it's not a job, it's a lifestyle. All these guys paddle, all these guys fish, all these guys do it, and it's a lot easier to get stuff done in a short period of time when you actually do it. I've been working with all these guys for a long time in various capacities throughout the industry, and I'm excited to be part of this team. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the boat. <laughs> All right, Hans, take us through what you were thinking. <laughs> tip to tip. Tip to tip. <laughs> In this segment of Hans, what were you thinking? So, uh, we, we definitely wanted a, a, we knew we wanted a boat that was gonna be under 13 feet, really around 12 and a half feet, because that's a, a great spot for a boat that you can still throw it in the back of your truck, you can car top it if you need to. It's, it's a boat that you can transport well. But knowing that this, we wanted that seat height to be nice and nice and high for fishing, how do we get that that much stability? That was a big challenge. And I think that was a challenge that you know Luther and Jake and Matt and I all talked and we discussed it thoroughly. You know? So um, that was really the, the I, I would say the, the origin of this whole is what do we do to make this better than anything else in this this thing? The challenge that I threw out to Hans when we first started was. <coughs> A boat that's 12 feet long that paddled like it's 14 feet long. A boat that's 33 inches wide that, that's as stable as 36, 37 inches wide. It needs a track straight and it needs a turn. And at first he said, you're crazy. And then he went then he went to work to see what he could do to uncover. We did a tremendous amount of testing and, and we've got the best in the world right here. What we ended up with... Hold on two seconds. Yeah. So what, what Luther asked for to make this relevant to you if you're not a kayak fisherman is he asked for... A hot chick that cooks and cleans, that does anything you want her to do, that came to the relationship with her own money, has a pickup truck, <laughs> can skin a deer, can skin a fish, and likes to cook. Pretty much that chick right there, my wife. Ha ha! Look at that. You see what I did there? That's just, that's the secret to a happy marriage right there, baby. Anyway, back to what you're doing. So I tried to get them to name this to Christy, but they wouldn't go for it. So here we go. All right, dude, take us down the hole. Yeah. So. What we ended up with is, is a catamaran style hole because it gives us all the stability we want, but we fused it with a mono keel that has some kind of tweaks to it that I'm not going to tell you all about the secrets of it, but it has some tweaks. And, uh, and so what we were able to get is a boat that paddles very efficiently. It's got a lot of glide. You want glide in a boat like this because when you get it moving, you want it to keep moving. So it's all about taking those easy paddle strokes, not having to have a lot of effort. And it's a very quiet, very quiet entry, very quiet exit of the water. But all of that stability comes through our catamaran style hole. And the other thing that's really great about a cat hole is that you have even more protection for your transducer. So we have a center transducer scupper. It's gonna allow you to have that sonar pod right where you need it. And you have even more protection if you're rolling over rocky shoals, and logs and things like that. And so. now that you can see the bottom of it, that's also what makes that the P position of the pod really great is that if you're going into shallow water, you can flip it up to keep your transducer from hitting the bottom. So yeah. that's another great thing about that bottom. So take us on back, show right. us how it is, and bring us home, Hans. All right, here we go. Let's scoot by it. So at the 
the back of the hole, a lot of our stability comes through these cat, these cat hole pontoons in the back of the hole. And the other thing that we did, which do you, I don't know if you have seen this or not, but we've got twin skid plates at the back. And those, those skid plates are great for you know, those extra wear points. The other thing we've done is we've designed the skid plates so that your line cannot get tangled in the, in the, uh, in the skid plate. So if you've ever been river fishing and had a, a fishing line tangled back there, you, you know how difficult that can be. And at the back of the hole, we're, we've, we've basically created a way for the water to release off the back of the hole. And when you see this boat going through the water, it's, it's really amazing how quiet the water leaves the back of the hole. And that tells you that you have a really good, efficient design. And as important as on the water stability is, the other thing that kind of a fringe benefit of this, this hull design is you've got launch stability as well. You, know, you pull up to a boat ramp, you set the boat down, everybody has done it, you go to stand into the boat and you got this wobble. Um, you know, a lot of times you can get in the boat where it's a little bit dry and kind of shove off. The problem is you've got this wobble. Because you've got two pontoons, you've got two skid plates, this is going to be stable even on the ground. It makes it great for, like, when you do go buy six of these for your for your uh, fishing outings, you can stack them on top of each other. It's perfect. It's like Tupperware. Mm -hmm. You just stack them up. It's not like Tupperware. It is Tupperware. <laughs> it's, plastic. it's plastic. It's fishing on Tupperware. All right, guys, so listen. That's going to do it. Like, that's a full walkthrough. That's as full a walkthrough as you get, right? Top to bottom, inside and out. Inside, not just a feature from a pro staff fisherman that says, this is the cool thing about this boat, but actual insight as to why each thing was done. So there it is. Here's a cool look at the little backdrop that they made there. Some sketches, some kind of the, along the way of the product development. It's been a fun ride and it's actually gonna be even more fun because myself and that guy right there and me and that guy right there, we're about to take two of these slap them on a trailer, go to the Mississippi River in Wisconsin, and beat the absolute hell out of them. Now, I'll tell you this, there's some prototype parts still in play, so that's making that guy right there, and that guy right there, and that guy right there nervous. But that's the beautiful thing about being the guy that just gets to go try to break it, and that guy right there who wants us to break it. So anyway, Bonafide Kayaks SS-127, if you have a kayak dealer in your area, go tell them if they don't have one of these on order yet, they need to get it. Go tell them if they have one of these on order, they need to change that to like 60 because they're going to need it. All right. And then from there, if you've got a buddy that's got a fishing kayak that he's not happy with, he should probably get it on Craigslist now because the market is going to be flooded with them real soon if you don't. So anyway, thanks for tuning into this video, guys. I will see you all down the road. As always, thanks for all your support. Give the video a big thumbs up. Comment below if you got a specific question because we're going to be shooting more videos all next week up on the Mississippi River chasing some bucket mouse in the backwaters. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been the Bonafide Kayaks SS-127 full walkthrough.